perhaps the most useless sign in the world is a keep out sign. Because we all have that, that voice in our head, that voice of indignant rage, you know, the one that sees a sign like that and is just immediately like, oh no, no, I'm going in there. You can't stop me, you can't, you can't tell me what to do. Whatever, whatever, I do what I want. What, is this a communist country or something? I thought this is America. There really is something about forbidden places, you know? There, there, there's a draw there. there. There's something really interesting about going to a place where either nobody's ever been or you know you're not supposed to go. I think especially today when everything feels like it's been mapped and explored, the idea that, that there's a place that you can't go, it, it just kind of trips up your brain. But the world is actually full of forbidden places and secret spots that, sadly, you'll probably never get to see. So I picked 10 of them to talk about today. So join me on a journey to the forbidden world. Wow. Narrowing this list down to 10 means that obviously a lot of places are gonna be left out. So some of the decisions were just based off of what I thought was most interesting. But I did decide to leave out certain obvious things like secret military bases like Area 51 or secret societies like the White's Club in England or Club 33 at Disneyland. Uh, although if you really want to see a video on those topics, just, just let me know. I know a guy that can make that happen. It's me. That guy is me. Also, to cram 10 places into this video, I had to keep them kind of short and sweet. So if you want to deep dive into any of these places, you know what to do. By the way, a little bonus fact before we get started, something I just kind of ran across while I was looking at this. Apparently, the most powerful passport in the world is from the United Arab Emirates. That's according to the Art and Capital's Passport Index. Apparently the UAE passport offers visa-free or visa-upon-arrival access to 160 destinations, which is more than any other country's passport. But even the most powerful passport in the world won't get you into these 10 places. First up, Lasco Cave in France. This one's kind of a bummer, really. The Lasco Cave is located in southwestern France, and it includes almost 600 prehistoric cave paintings that date back to around 17,000 to 15,000 BCE. Most of the paintings are of animals applied either by fingers or brushes made of hair or moss, or by simply blowing pigment on a stencil directly under the walls. Four boys accidentally discovered the cave in 1940, and it opened to the public in 1948, but then it was closed to people in 1963. Yeah, while it was open, as many as 1,500 visitors a day visited the cave, but the carbon dioxide and, and the water vapor and human breath started to degrade the paintings. Algae even began growing on the cave's walls because of all the visitors. And in fact, fungi is still an issue that's being controlled to this day in the cave. So while you can't visit the real cave, you can visit Lasco 2, which is a replica of the Great Hall of the Bulls in the painted gallery sections. It opened in 1983, just 200 meters from the original cave. And apparently it's, it's still pretty cool, but I mean, come on, can't beat the real thing. Next up is North Sentinel Island. I actually covered this in a, in a video like way, way early in the channel, but yeah, North Sentinel Island is located in the Indian Ocean. Uh, you can find it, but good luck stepping foot on it or getting within five kilometers of it. The island's inhabited by a pretty much prehistoric group of people that they call the Sentinelese, and um, they are extremely hostile to visitors. In fact, if you get there, you're met pretty much immediately with arrows and pointed spears. In fact, they so don't like people coming to their island that they attacked and killed two fishermen that washed up on the shore in 2006. This is uh, not a new phenomenon. It's unknown exactly how many people live on the island, but anthropologists think that they've probably lived there for about 60,000 years, completely isolated from the rest of the world. And with little to no contact with the rest of the world all that time, their immune systems are ridiculously unequipped to handle just anything that's passed on from visitors. So yeah, there, there's a lot of good reasons to not try to get on this island. But that didn't stop John Allen Chow in 2018. Chow was a 26-year-old American missionary who ignored the warnings and tried three different times to spread the message of Christianity to those heathens on the island. And despite all the warnings, despite the actual Indian government trying to prevent him from getting on there, he did it anyway and immediately was murdered by the Sentinelese people. They buried him right there on the beach. Yeah, don't go there. Next up is Poveglia. So here's another island that you're not allowed to visit, but this time it's not because of who lives there. Located between Venice and Lido, Italy, Paveglia is nicknamed the world's most haunted island and the island of ghosts. And why might there be ghosts there? Because during the bubonic plague in the 1300s, anybody showing signs of the disease was forced onto this island. The tales say that Poveglia hosted more than 160,000 infected people over the years, with many of them burned and buried there. In fact, this might be an urban legend, but they claim that 50% of the soil is composed of human remains. 
But you might be thinking, that's not quite creepy enough. So in 1922, the island was home to a mental hospital where it said that a doctor tortured and butchered many of his patients there. The hospital closed in 1968, but the ruins are still there, slowly being reclaimed by nature. In fact, all the structures are falling apart. So no boats go to the island, and Italy prohibits access to it unless you want to fill out a whole ton of paperwork. Although for the right amount, you might be able to pay somebody to just hop on a boat and take you over there. But tread lightly, because, you know, of all that ash. That perfectly normal human ash. Next up is the Vatican's secret archives. So this bends the rules a little bit in terms of, like, leaving out secret societies or whatever, but there's some really, really interesting stuff in the Vatican secret archives. Paging Dan Brown. Actually, they changed the name of the Vatican Secret Archives in 2019 to the Vatican Apostolic Archives. Apparently, Pope Francis renamed it to take away the negativity around the word secret. The archive apparently contains millions of documents across 12 centuries. Some of the documents are the original acts of the 1633 Trial of Galileo by the Roman Inquisition, King Henry VIII's request to divorce Catherine of Aragon and Mary Anne Boleyn, and a document excommunicating Martin Luther from the Catholic Church. So the archives are off limits to most people, but they are open to serious scholars who have to renew their credentials every six months. They're also only allowed to view up to three folders a day from the catalog of items that are all written in either Italian or Latin. So it's not totally secret, but it's secret enough to spur a bunch of conspiracy theories about time machines and, you know, extraterrestrial skulls. Next up is Snake Island, Brazil. Ilha de Queimada Grande is an island about 40 kilometers off the coast of Brazil, but visiting it will, um, yeah, probably kill you. Yeah, there's a reason why it's called Snake Island. It's because it's filled with venomous snakes. Not just snakes, actually. The Golden Lancehead Snakes, which is a pit viper species and is actually one of the world's deadliest snakes. One bite can cause you to die within an hour. There are believed to be about 4,000 snakes on the island, which used to be part of Brazil's mainland. Uh, rising sea levels about 10,000 years ago separated it from the South American landmass. And because of that, these isolated snakes just evolved differently from those on the mainland. Since they had no prey but birds, they evolved their venom to be extra potent so they could kill almost instantly any bird that it comes across. So local birds know what's up and they don't go to the island. They tend to avoid the island. Some migrating birds do land there every once in a while though and become prey. So uh, if I were you, I would be a local bird. Stay away from Snake Island. Then there's North Brother Island in New York. So I mentioned Paveglia earlier, one of the reasons they prohibit people from going there is because of the deteriorating structures. Well, that's why people are not allowed to go to North Brother Island in New York. Humans used to live in the island, which housed the Riverside Hospital from 1881 to 1943. The hospital included the tuberculosis sanatorium and pavilions designated for illnesses, laboratories, and homes and dormitory facilities for doctors, nurses, and other staff members. In fact, the famous Typhoid Mary lived and died in these facilities. But time has taken its toll, and all 25 buildings are in various states of dilapidation. Also, Northern Brother and South Brother Islands are part of the Harbor Herons region. Uh, these are birds that use the islands in the spring to nest and rear their young. So people are especially not allowed to go there between March 21st and September 21st for that reason. But mainly it's the, the, the structural problems with the buildings around there. So really only people with academic or scientific purposes are allowed on the island, usually to study the birds. Next is Room 39 in North Korea. This is the most secretive room in the most secretive building in the most secretive capital, the most secretive country on the planet. It's believed to be located in the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang, North Korea, and the only reason we know anything about it is because some defectors that have actually been there. It's where the North Korean government plotted and conducted a lot of nefarious activities, including money counterfeiting, illegal arms and drug deals, and cybercrime operations. In fact, cybercrime might be Room 39's biggest operation. There are apparently thousands of hackers thought to be working there. I would go on and on about this, except that that's literally all we know. For now, Room 39 will remain a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Next up is Metro 2 in Moscow. Winston Churchill is actually the person who coined that phrase of riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, but he was talking about Russia when he said it in 1939. Like North Korea, the Soviet Union was known to be highly secretive, and one of its secrets was a tunnel system called Metro 2. The story has it that Joseph Stalin had this secret system built so that he and his loyal comrades could escape if a revolution took place. What? Stalin? Paranoid? Pshaw! And just like North Korea, what we know about Metro 2 comes from defectors like former KGB colonel and double agent Oleg Gordievsky. He was quoted saying, You do not know the main KGB secret yet. A huge underground city, a whole communications network of such facilities. But they will not show you. They will never, of course. So yeah, according to legend, Metro 2 is like a whole private underground secret subway system and communications network underneath Moscow 
that nobody can go to. It's never been confirmed or denied by Russia's Federal Security Service or the Moscow Metro Administration. Next up is Surtsey Island in Iceland. So there's been a lot of ooh, ah, secretive stuff here. This one is actually and really cool, I think, anyway. It's remarkably special. It's an island that's off limits because scientists want to see how life evolves there. Surtsey is located about 32 kilometers from Iceland's south coast. It's a brand new island formed by volcanic eruptions that happened from 1963 to 1967, and it's been protected ever since then. Studying Surtsey has produced information on the colonization process of new land by animal and plant life. And that's because as scientists study Surtsey, it's produced a lot of information about how the colonization process of new land by animal and plant life works. Scientists started studying the island in 1964 and have seen the arrival of seeds carried by ocean currents and the appearance of bacteria, fungi, and molds in the first vascular plant in 1965. There have been 89 species of birds recorded on the island and insects and marine animals are also present. But other than the few scientists who visit the island for research purposes, they're the only living creatures allowed on Surtsey, so don't get your hopes up on visiting it. Last but not least is the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia. The Ark of the Covenant is a sacred gold-covered chest of the Israelites, and it's rumored to contain the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod and a pot of manna. In the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Nazis wanted to find it because ownership would make an army invincible. I won't spoil the plot for you in case you haven't seen it. I know it's a pretty obscure movie, but I will tell you where the Ark is held currently. Or maybe I should say where it's rumored to be, which is in Aksum, Ethiopia, in the head church of the church's Holy of Holies, Virgin Mary of Zion. Ethiopian Orthodox Christians believe that it was brought to Aksum by Menelik, who was the son of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon of Israel, after Jerusalem was sacked in 586 BCE. A priest is appointed for life to watch over the Ark, and he's not allowed to leave the premises. And no one is allowed to see the Ark, not even the head of the Ethiopian church. But there has been at least one non-Ethiopian person who saw the Ark, Ethiopiologist Edward Ullendorf. He told the Los Angeles Times in 1992, quote, I've seen it. There was no problem getting access when I saw it in 1941. They have a wooden box, but it's empty. Middle to late medieval construction, even these were fabricated ad hoc. So for the record, Ethiopians say it's inconceivable that he could have actually seen it, and they say that he was shown a fake, but I guess we'll never know. So those are 10 places I ran across. Uh, maybe there's a few of them that you haven't heard of before, but my question is, if you could go to any of these, which one would it be? Mine would be Alaska Cave. It, it really does bum me out that you can't go there, but yeah, I get it. Actually, here's an even better question. Have any of you actually been to one of these places? I mean, I said it was impossible, but I mean, obviously some people have gone to these places. Now, I'm really curious. I wonder how many people who see this have actually been to one of the places in this list. Sound off in the comments. I want to know. But you know one place you really can't go? Other planets. Hi, I got a haircut to tell you about today's sponsor, Displate. Nary but a handful of fortnights ago, I got my first set of disc plates, and I was thrilled to find out that they actually had all of the NASA-designed uh, travel posters to exoplanets. So I got them, and I put them up on my wall, because I'm a nerd. But I also got travel posters of places where my wife and I have actually visited, because I just live here. If you're not familiar with Displate, they're an online store where you can buy photos and art printed directly on metal plates, which you can then choose from thousands of independent artists and in pretty much every style and subject you can imagine from movies, video games, anime, travel, landscapes, the list goes on and on. And what's really cool about Displate is that they're really easy to switch out and swap out whenever you want to because you just stick them to the wall with magnets. Just clean the spot on the wall, lay down the adhesive base, stick the magnet on top of it, and then you're just hanging art on your wall. No nails, no holes, and because it's magnetic, you can move it around and adjust it however you need. It even comes with a tiny leveling device and a template so you can get it just right. It also means you can easily swap out your art with art for non-nerds in the house. And that's what I like about Displate. It kind of keeps things easy and flexible, and you can just kind of keep things interesting. And this month, they're offering a summer sale. If you sign up at the link below and enter the code JOESCOTT at checkout, you'll get 22% off one Displate and 33% off two or more. I even put together a list of some of my favorite collections to get you started. There's the NASA ones like I got, but they also have planets, movie posters, city grids. Um, there's just some really cool stuff out there. I'll put the link down below. So if you've never heard of Displate or you haven't ever checked it out before, just hit the link down below and just start browsing their artwork. There's some really cool stuff in there. It's a lot of fun. And thanks to Displate for supporting this video. Big shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members that keep the lights on around here are forming an awesome community and just helping me out in a million different ways. I can't thank you guys enough. There's some new members I need to shout out real quick. We got Michael Colton, Melicia Placevic, <laughs> Steve O'Nash, Thomas Creedon, Nathan Honey, Kaylee Lopez, Donald Jacobson, Raymond uh, Jaimez, and Cornelia Winstrom. 
Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos, also get exclusive live streams, uh, just click the little join button down below and you'll get a little, a little thing next to your name that makes you stand out from everybody else. It's pretty cool. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. I think I'll put another list up here. If you like this list video, it'll be another list. You can go check that out. Or look at any of those on the side, but the sidebar will have my face on them. Any of those thumbnails, go check those out. And if you enjoy them, uh, I do invite you to subscribe. I come back to videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.